What's going on, guys? And welcome to day eight of Dunk Every Day. Kevin, please tell him what just happened. Wait, what do you mean? I took his money. Tell him. Oh, yeah. So we got a shooting gun here at the high school. We uh, were messing around Where's a little high bit. school, by the way? Yeah. Let's go Raiders. Just messing around a little bit. You know, decided to put a shooting gun up there. And we were playing a little bit of, you know, one-on-one -on -one action with the shooting gun. And uh, he beat me by, what, one, two? We ain't going to tell him how many we got out of 20. Because yeah. that's actually... So Kevin got 10 out of 20, three-pointers. and I take I, that. <laughs> what did I get, 13? Yeah. 13 out of 20. So, of course, had to take Kevin's money like I always do. Kevin's just an easy target. Like, when you have a friend like Kevin, you just bet him at everything. <laughs> hey, Kevin, I bet I can walk to that door faster than you. Okay. He's always like, okay, let's do it. And I'm like, and I get there first, and I take his money. So, anyways, yeah. dunk every day, day eight. We're about to get into the dunk session. Let's get it. Hey, popping like I'm post to Watch out for the people that ain't close to Speak a little something you could toast to I ain't trying to hear about what you won't do All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the dunk session for today. Today's dunk session was a good one. Actually, it wasn't really that great. Nothing exciting. It was a low intensity day. And I will say that I wasn't feeling that bouncy today. And the reason I wasn't feeling that bouncy is because I was doing my ankle work before I did my dunks. Normally, if I do my ankle strengthening exercises and especially my calf raises before I dunk, I never feel bouncy. This is for me. The two exercises that make me feel the least bouncy are calf raises, especially if I do them heavy, or especially if I hold an isometric calf raise, and sprints. If I sprint all out max sprints, and then I go to try to test on the Vertec, I never get as high as I normally do. But anyways, for this low intensity session, you guys know what it is. What we did is we dunked from eight feet all the way to nine feet, four jumps at each inch increment. So four jumps at eight foot, four jumps at eight one, four jumps at eight two, all the way to nine feet, and those four Four jumps were one jump off of my right left, one jump off of my left right, one jump off of my right foot, and one jump off of my left foot. I got a comment on one of my YouTube videos that said, can you post your entire dunk session? And yes, I will show you guys a full jump session, a full dunk session that I do, but it's not going to be a low intensity day. It'll probably be a medium or a high intensity day because that is a little bit more exciting and I'll show you exactly what I do for my dunk sessions. Along with that, I got a couple comments on YouTube asking if I'm going to show show my workouts that I'm doing along with all of these dunk sessions and the answer is yes starting right now today I'm going to show you guys every single episode of this dunk every day series I'm going to show you the workout that I do that day as well so while I go through my indestructible knees program while I go through my beyond the rim 2 program and as we get into the more intense exercises and workouts and it gets more exciting I will show you guys every single thing that I do and I will probably do voiceovers and tell you exactly why I'm doing these jump exercises and how to perform them yourself for best results on your own vertical jump. Moving like I'm into, hit the ground running like the rain do, speak a little something that you're into, I ain't trying to hear about what you've been through. Like, hold on. But without further ado, the workout that I did today was a knee strengthening workout and it was something very simple and i did an ankle strengthening workout for my ankle strengthening workout i did five minutes on the exercise bike then i did five minutes of reverse dead mills just to warm up my knees then i did the ankle abc's so you're just tracing the abc's with your ankle it's a good mobility drill i did ankle circles trying to push the limits as big of a circle as i can make with my ankle i did these ankle circles two sets of 15 reps each direction then i did my standing dorsiflexion pumps for three sets of 10 reps and i am feeling a little bit better on my standing dorsiflexion pumps because just a little while ago i could not even move my knee past my toe and now i am slightly creeping a little bit further and further and i'm trying to get my left ankle to be able to dorsiflex as far as my right ankle can after that i did single leg squats just trying to dorsiflex once again as far as i can i'm trying to drop my knee down to the floor i'm trying to 
to squat down as far as I can without letting my heel come up off of the ground. So this is a mobility ankle drill and an ankle strengthening exercise at the same time. And I did this one for two sets of 10 reps and I used five pound dumbbells just because. Then I did my single leg calf raises and I used a slant board and I am holding the isometric at the top of the calf raise for five seconds. And I did three sets of 10 reps of these calf raises with a five second isometric pause at the top of the rep. And to finish it off, we have the four point banded ankle strength drill, 20 reps challenging plantar flexion, 20 reps challenging dorsiflexion, 20 reps challenging medial rotation, and 20 reps challenging lateral rotation. And that was it for my ankle strength. And after my ankle strength, I did move into my isometrics for my knees. Today, I am doing isometrics three times today for three sets of 30 seconds. And I'm gonna spread out the sessions by six hours. So as you see here, I'm doing a single leg iso hold knee extension, and I'm using a kettlebell on my foot, and I'm holding it for 30 seconds. I'm going to do these isometrics at 7 a.m., which I'm doing right now. I'm going to do them again at 1 p.m., and I'm going to do them again at 9 p.m. So three separate sessions. Each workout or each session when I do these isometrics, I am doing three sets of 30 seconds. This is a good idea if you have knee pain is to not only just do isometrics one time a day, but do it two or three times a day with at least six hours separating your sessions. And I actually find this a little bit funny because recently I got an Instagram DM and the DM was John Evans is wrong and it just linked a post. That's all it said. John Evans is wrong. And it was a post where John Evans talks about how you might be doing isometrics wrong to do it the correct way. You should do it three times a day and you should do it for three sets of 45 seconds each time. And if you're not doing it this way, then you are wrong. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you that John Evans is not wrong. There's been many studies that support this evidence and support that doing isometrics with six hours in between each session is very beneficial and doing them for three sets of 45 seconds is very beneficial and for these isometrics to really work and really be beneficial and cause change and adaptation and really help your tendons heal at the end of your isometric set it should be hard for you so whether you're going to do a single leg knee extension isometric or a Spanish squat or a wall sit or a lunge hold or a slim board squat hold you want to make sure that when you are getting to the end of that set of 30 seconds or 45 seconds you are creeping up at a point where it is getting hard to hold that isometric and if you had to go past 30 or 45 seconds you wouldn't really be able to do it so you want to make this hard to cause adaptation in your tendons anyways with these single leg knee extension isometrics where I was holding a kettlebell on my foot I superseted them with tall kneeling lean backs and this one is tough on my ankle Ankle, the ankle that I sprained. I cannot yet push this one very far. I can't even sit on my heels, to be honest with you. So we're still working on it. And this is an exercise that I've added in almost every single day to help with mobility and strength in my ankle. And guys, that is it for today. So I guess today's topic of this video is going to be the correct way to do isometrics or better yet, John Evans is wrong. That's what I'm gonna make the title of this video, but John Evans is not wrong. In order to do isometrics properly, and they will probably work better for you and be more effective for you if you do them three times per day for three to five sets of 30 to 45 seconds with at least six hours in between each of those sessions. And you could do a Spanish squat. You could do a single leg extension isometric. You could do a slam board squat hold. You can do a wall sit. You could do a lunge hold, but just make sure that if you are going to do these isometrics, you do them to a point where it is hard for you at the end of the exercise. By the time you creep up at the end of that set, you should be struggling to hold that isometric and that will be the most effective for your knees. So if you need to hold dumbbells while you're doing your lunge hold or your Spanish squat or whatever you're going to do, do that, but just make it challenging by the time that you are done with that set. Three to five sets of 30 to 45 seconds with at least six hours in between each session. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video for Dunk Every Day, day nine. Hey, hold up, hold up, say what's the hold up. I got the pack, who got the roll up? I'm trying to pull up. It seems like every time I show up, it gotta go up. See the drip, they see the glow up. Oh, now they know us. See, it's funny how my pockets out of shape. But